Hi everyone. I'd like to do a little public service announcement on the importance of winterizing your motorcycle, your lawnmower, your chainsaw, your backpack blower, anything you have that runs off of gasoline. Now the reason it is so important to do this is because of what I'm going to show you now. The gasoline, at least here in the United States and the southern United States where I buy it, uh, has as much as 10% ethanol in it as the picture that uh, you saw earlier shows. Um, the, the problem with ethanol, well that's first of all the benefit. The reason ethanol is put into gasoline is for emissions. Uh, ethanol burns cleaner than gasoline and by substituting 10% you get a 10% improvement in, uh, basically in, in the emissions. The problem with ethanol is that it is hydroscopic. That means that it will grab moisture right out of the air and, uh, and combine with it, the alcohol, the ethanol in there. Um, as you know, if you, you know, anybody knows anything about, about alcohol, you know, you certainly mix it with water and it does mix very well. Um, but it also will draw it out of the air. It actually aggressively pulls the moisture in the form of humidity out of the air and will uh, bring it into the gasoline. Now, uh, there, a lot of people know that this is the case, but they may not know why this is the case. Now, uh, I worked for a lot of years uh, for a lawn, and, a lawn and garden dealer and tractor dealer, and about 80% of all of the machines that we get in at the first of the year in the spring that won't run as, are a result of leaving ethanol-based gasoline uh, or ethanol-blended gasoline in the mower or tractor or whatever. Uh, it works the same for your motorcycle. Uh, leaving it over the winter time. Now, just to give you a little, a little uh, timeline, uh, generally speaking, based on the humidity, average humidity that you'd find here in the southeast uh, and some other places around the country, gasoline with ethanol in it is good for about 30 days. Uh, at the end of 30 days, it will have absorbed enough moisture out of the air that it's going to start undergoing what's called phase separation. Okay, what happens when you have phase separation is uh, the moisture that is now being tied up by the ethanol in the fuel will, will reach a certain amount to where the gasoline and alcohol mixture cannot stay in solution together anymore. Now agitating it by running the motor or, or shaking it helps just a little bit, but not much because really the damage is already done, the moisture is already in the gasoline. But what happens is it will settle out and phase separate and what you end up with is a top layer of gasoline uh, with no octane left in it, most of the additives removed from it, uh, and it's just really basically dead gasoline that if you ever ran any of that you'd know how poor in performance it is. Um, the rest of the layer, what forms on the bottom, is a sticky, gooey kind of a mixture. Uh, looks a lot like, uh, I don't know, it just looks like muddy water almost. But it's uh, very sticky, uh, it's very corrosive because it has a lot of water in it. And this is what attacks your fuel system. The, it actually coats, even, even in very small amounts, it will coat the jets. Uh, coat the injectors, it will coat the inside of the tank and the fuel lines, it will coat the inside of your fuel pump if you have one. Now in a lawn and garden tractor this is devastating because the little valves that are in the in the fuel pump uh, have to open and close in order to actually pump the fuel. These will actually be glued shut and so you get no fuel flow. Um, the problem with the carburetor, of course, is it plugs up the jets. It makes the needle and seat very sticky so that the, the needle sticks in the seat and you don't get any fuel flow there. Um, it just creates a real mess. And, and in addition, while it's doing all this, an aluminum carburetor or steel parts in the carburetor, they start to corrode because of the water and they begin to rust. Or, or, or if it's steel rust, if it's uh, aluminum, just to corrode and oxidize. Um, so you say, what can you do about it? Well, there are some solutions. You've seen all kinds of products like Stable and uh, several others. I can't think of all of them right now. 
um, and they all work in different ways. Uh, but the most important thing to remember that is, is that they do not cure the problem. They do not prevent, eventually, they do not prevent the moisture from getting into the gasoline. Now we used to sell a product uh, that uh, actually formed a coating over the top of the gasoline as a physical barrier to the moisture getting in. And that worked okay, but that also evaporated. So you could get maybe 60 days out of a tank of gas that way. Um, but uh, things like stable, stable works in a different way. It works some sort of chemical magic uh, to help try to tie up some of the moisture in a, in a more friendly way, but it still, uh, still doesn't solve the problem. The only way to solve the problem is to not use ethanol gasoline to begin with. So you can find this, uh, it's a little, getting a little easier to find now. You may find it listed as a recreational gasoline. You can go online and punch in uh, ethanol-free gasoline, and, and in a lot of cities, you'll end up with a, uh, uh, it'll give you a listing of, of gas stations that do sell it. It is more expensive, as much as a dollar more expensive than your regular gasoline, but it's also worth it. Another place you can find it is at marinas. Uh, boat owners have learned this years ago, that leaving their boat all winter with ethanol gas in it is a disaster, and it can be thousands of dollars to fix it. So start off with no ethanol in it to begin with. Uh, go ahead and run ethanol gas all year. I mean, you know, while you're riding, it's not a problem. Again, if you burn it up in 30 days, you're not going to have any problem. It's going to go right through the carburetor, right through the fuel injection system, no problem. It'll work fine. It's just when you know that your bike is going to sit for the winter, you want to get all the ethanol gas out of it and just run a couple of tanks of pure, eth of pure gasoline. Uh, if I said pure ethanol, I'm sorry, I apologize. It was, you want to get pure gasoline, ethanol-free gasoline. Um, and go ahead and run a few tanks of that with, and then when you're ready to finally put it up, top it off to the top as much as you can, leaving as little airspace as possible in the tank with pure gasoline. Uh, some of the uh, gas stations are, are starting to carry it, but they also offer synthetic fuels now. We used to call it white gas, uh, Coleman stove. Uh, similar to Coleman stove fluid, but they make a product now, um, several companies do, that uh, one company makes it with ultra pure gasoline with lubricants and all that in it. Uh, another one makes it out of completely synthetic, uh, uh, the steel corporation for, with chainsaws and all, they make it out of a, a completely synthetic so there's no ethanol in it. Uh, their stuff is guaranteed for two years. It can sit in your motorcycle, it can sit in your chainsaw, whatever, your lawnmower, for two years and they guarantee you that it will not cause any corrosion, it will protect everything inside. Uh, and uh, from my personal experience, I've sold a ton of that stuff and it really, really works. And I keep all my, my chainsaw, which I don't operate very often, ca carries 100% blend of that all the time. I never put anything else in it and it's always ready to go. My blower is the same way. Now this stuff is expensive. It's about $5 a quart, if I remember right. And so you don't want to run it all the time, it's just too expensive. But when it gets to that time of year that you're not gonna use it, you're, you're a piece of equipment, go ahead. And you don't have to fill your tank up with this stuff. I'm not saying go out and buy five or six gallons of, of this, or in the case of my motorcycle here, three, three, three and a half gallons of this stuff to put in there. Again, straight gas will work perfectly well. Um, just be sure you get it without the ethanol. But uh, that'll save you a big headache. And uh, believe me, I saw, I've seen this year after year after year. You would not believe how many carburetors I've sold. You would not believe how many fuel pumps I've sold for lawnmowers and tractors. It's just amazing. And it's a real tragedy because in the, in, we need the ethanol in there for, to help with the air quality. Um, but it was never calculated what it was going to do to these small engines. And it's cost, I'm sure it's cost billions of dollars. Uh, for private owners like, like we are. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know uh, that's why you can't keep ethanol fuel in there. I know uh, uh, hopefully this will answer some questions for you and uh, you'll know why this happens. Uh, again, I want to stress that the products like Stable and some of the others, they do help. They will extend the life of the gasoline but I have not seen one yet that will carry it over about three months, over the coldest part of the year here in this part of the country. It just won't do it, it can't do it. It, it actually loses effectiveness over time. Uh, 
Oh, alternatively, if you have something small or even a even something like a bike or whatever, if you want to run all the fuel out of it, you certainly can do that. Run every bit of fuel out of it. Um, but I really don't recommend that only because uh, these components that are inside your fuel injection system and inside your carburetors, they're meant to run continuously submerged in gasoline. Uh, if you let them get dry, a lot of times the rubber components and some of the other plastic parts will actually uh, swell a little bit or will start to degrade and uh, it can cause your problems down the road. So uh, even better than having no gas, just get some pure gas or get some of these other synthetic fuels to put in there. Okay guys, uh, that's just my little uh, public service announcement. Uh, again, only reason I'm doing this is because of years of seeing so many pieces of equipment ruined uh, and you definitely don't want to buy a carburetor or four of them for your motorcycle or injectors or injection pumps or anything like that. You just don't want to do it. It's something simple. Again, look for recreational gas or marine gas or synthetic fuel to put in these bikes over the winter and all your, uh, all your two strokes, all your gasoline products. Okay, I've gone on way too much. You've got the idea, but I uh, uh, hope you'll, uh, you know, hope your bike starts up great for you next year. Uh, take just a few moments. There, there are other things you need to do, which I'm not going to cover in this video. But this is the most important thing you can do, absolutely bar none. So, you guys take care, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.